A long ass time ago, in a town called Kickapoo, there lived a humble family, religious through and through. But yeah, there was a black sheep and he knew just what to do. His name was Young JB and he refused to step in line. And so begins the tale of Jack Black and Kyle Gass, better known as Jables and the Rage Cage. As they embark on a quest to find an elusive guitar pick crafted from the devil's very own tooth. But the story of the D is filled with ups and downs, a meteoric rise to underground fame and the crushing reality of a film that just didn't seem to connect when it was released. It's time we paid tribute to the self-proclaimed greatest band of all time and find out just what the f*** happened to Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Jack Black and Kyle Gass would meet in 1986 at the famed Los Angeles Actors Gang Theater, where Gass was the house musician and Black an aspiring actor. Black says that it wasn't an instant connection between the two as there was a bit of jealousy between them. However, a trip to Scotland to perform the Tim Robbins co-scripted play Carnage would change it all as the duo would spend their free time together, even climbing the notorious Arthur's Seat Volcano. Once back in the States, Gas would agree to teach Black how to play guitar. And since Black was a broke acting student, Gas would agree to teach him in exchange for dinners, which Black says was mostly the two tacos for one dollar deal at the local Jack in the Box. The duo would convene at Gas's apartment for jam sessions, but the real breakthrough came one day when Black was listening to the song One by Metallica and called it the greatest song in the world. To which Gas lamented that they could never write the best song in the world, which got the juices flowing in Jack Black's ever running mind. As he thought up the fact that they wouldn't have to write the best song in the world, they could just write a tribute to the greatest song in the world, which they couldn't remember. Over the course of the next three days, the duo hunkered down and wrote their first song, and in doing so realized the potential for a purely comedic band. Prior to this revelation, Black had written a breakup song after a relationship ended that was serious in tone and he would reflect upon later in life calling it, quote, super embarrassing. With their first song written, not the greatest song in the world, mind you, just a tribute, the D finally had the seed that would develop into a tree of rock hard epic metal. They would perform on stage for the first time at an Actors Gang variety event where they would go by the name The Axe Lords, featuring Gorgazon's Mischief, which doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. <laughs> As the Actors Gang was a respected troupe, it wouldn't be uncommon for some names to appear in the audience from time to time. And as a young JB looked out into the crowd before they performed their first show, he would see none other than Harry Shearer sitting in the audience. Black took this as a sign from down below that they were on the right track, as not only is Harry Shearer the voice of several Simpsons characters, but also the bassist, known as Derek Smalls, for the pinnacle comedy band of all time, Spinal Tap. If that show was a sign from below that Jables and the Rage Cage were on the right path, their first performance at an actual music event at a place called Al's Bar in the summer of 94 would be the true birth of Tenacious D. During their performance that night, they performed their song Tribute for the first time and also took a poll of the audience to determine the name of their band with such names as The Axelords, Pets or Meat, Balboa's Biblical Theater, and Tenacious D in the running. And here's a dirty little secret, my friends. Tenacious D didn't actually win that contest, yet the name stuck. One of the people in the audience that night, a person who may or may not have voted for the name Tenacious D, was a little comedic talent known as David Cross. He enjoyed the act so much that he invited the newly named Tenacious D to open for a live version of his and fellow comedic genius Bob Odenkirk's show, conveniently titled Mr. Show. Have you ever taken an illegal drug? Yes. Okay. Marijuana? Yes. Cocaine? Yes. Heroin? Yes. What about crack? Do you ever... Smoke yeah. some crack? Yes. Dude, you're out there! Black, who started his journey wanting to be an actor, would even be cast on the HBO series of the same name just one year later. The connection with Mr. Show would continue to pay off in spades when friend of the show Maynard James Keenan would invite Tenacious D, who had been gaining a large following at clubs around LA, to open for his band, Tool, for their three California shows in December 95. More chance meetings would continue to pave the way to success for the band, as when Jack Black attended UCLA, he would meet a man named Jason Bloom, 
That's B-L-O-O-M, not B-L-U-M, like the horror producer. Bloom would get the opportunity early in his career to direct a major motion picture starring a major Hollywood star. We're, of course, referring to 1996's Pauly Shore classic, Biodome. Bloom would invite the band to perform a song in their very first film appearance. As the D continued to shred their way around LA, building a large following, they would perform at the world-renowned Viper Room, where Scream lead singer Pete Stahl would invite his friend Dave Grohl to come check out the band, thus kicking off a friendship that has lasted nearly 30 years. During this time, Tenacious D would start handing out their four-song demo around town, until it got into the hands of HBO, who would offer the duo their own TV show with the added confidence that Black was already seasoned in the HBO TV world. Sadly, only three episodes of the HBO show were made, KG said that HBO offered them a 10-episode deal as long as they relinquished their executive producer roles and only wrote songs for the series with no other creative input, which the duo gave a resounding F that. And walked. Now, more tenacious than ever, the D would begin opening for some high-profile bands, such as Beck, Pearl Jam, and the Foo Fighters, for whom they would appear in the music video for their hit song, Learn to Fly. At the same time, Jack Black's career would begin to soar with a scene-stealing performance in the John Cusack film, High Fidelity. I'm looking for a record for my daughter. I just called to say I love you. Do you even know your daughter? There's no way she likes that song. <laughs> oh, no, oh, is she in a coma? On September 25th, 2001, when the nation truly needed a piece of good comedy, Tenacious D released their self-titled first album, Produced by the Dust Brothers and featuring a full band including Dave Grohl on drums and Fish's Paige McConnell on keyboards, the album would be well received, with Entertainment Weekly simply calling it hilarious. The album would peak at number 33 on the Billboard 200 charts and would ultimately reach platinum status four years later, selling over 420,000 copies. Thanks in part to the popular music videos, including one for Tribute directed by Liam Lynch. And all of that was in spite of the fact that some stores pulled the album from the shelves due to its controversial cover parodying the well-known Devil Tarot card. With the successful album out and the legion of fans showing up to their shows, there was only one logical next step. Make a movie! Gas and Black had dreamt of making a Tenacious D film since they originally formed the band with Black saying early on that a movie would be the pinnacle. Having no experience writing a movie, JB and KG, along with director Liam Lynch, that's LL I guess, began taking pitches for a potential movie with a script even being written that would follow the duo as they became obsessed with the lost city of Atlantis and falling in love with a woman who had written a book about the island after Ronnie James Dio sent them on a trip to Miami. Black says the script was really funny but wasn't really in the true D style. It was then that Lynch suggested the trio just write the movie themselves with Gas and Black deciding the origin of the band would be a simple yet hilarious way to tell their story. Add in a subplot about a magical pick forged from the devil himself, and inspiration from classics such as This Is Spinal Tap, Cheech and Chong, Beavis and Butthead, and A Little Temple of Doom, and you have the makings of one hilarious film that only the self-proclaimed greatest band in the world could make. Yeah. Want me to teach you some Spanish words, man? Or well, like when you see a real good friend, you know, like you say, Hey, pendejo, how you doing? By 2003, New Line Cinemas had signed on to finance the film with Lynch making his feature film directorial debut after making a name for himself with music videos for artists such as No Doubt, Queens of the Stone Age, Weird Al Yankovic, and of course Tenacious D, as well as creating the cult puppet show Civil and Ollie. Filming was set to begin sometime in 2003, but was delayed when Jack Black was cast in Peter Jackson's King Kong remake. Filming on Kong would go on longer than expected, and cameras wouldn't begin rolling on Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny until spring 2005. Of course, with Black's rising star status in Hollywood, he was now a $12 million man. However, in order to get the film made, he, without hesitation, agreed to take a $1 million payday that he would split with gas. With filming underway, the band would discover just how deep their fandom ran when many celebrities came out to support the film by appearing in cameos. The late great Meatloaf would come on board to play a young JB's heavily religious father, with this marking the first time he had sung in a film since appearing in the Rocky Horror Picture Show back in 1975. I said, 
I'm an actor. I'm not a musician. And people just think of me as a musician. And I need to be taken seriously as an actor. So if I, do, if I sing, they're not going to take me seriously as an actor. Next up would be another late great legend, Ronnie James Dio, who would send the young Jables on a quest to Hollywood. Double more? Yes. No. And say harmonies on them too? No. And backing vocals? <laughs> it's no fun. I want to do more. That's <laughs> no, great. I'm glad you're happy with that. Oh, God. Cool. Good no, part, too. Uh, great stuff you want. Yeah, good. I just can't believe this is really happening. <laughs> Um, Poof, and you woke up. Black's Orange County co-star Colin Hanks would show up as a frat boy who throws a beer at gas, Amy Poehler as a less than enthused waitress, Fred Armisen as a security guard, Ben Stiller as a guitar store employee who knows an awful lot about the pick of destiny, Tim Robbins, the man who wrote the original play that would bring Gas and Black together all those years ago, as a man also in search of the famous pick, John C. Riley as Sasquatch. Riley would also receive credit in the film for his Sasquatch research. Dave Grohl as Satan, a role he revived from the tribute video. And last and certainly not least, a pre-fame Amy Adams as a horny concert goer. The film had its first test screening in October 2005 with reshoots taking place in the summer of 2006. Director Liam Lynch said the entire cast and crew were eager to return as they had a blast making the film with Jack Black saying it was the best time he ever had on a set. To promote the film, the D would travel around the world performing anywhere they could, appearing on SNL, Conan, Letterman, and The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. They would even sell out a performance at the world famous Madison Square Garden. Jables and the Rage Cage were flying high, expecting the film to be a massive hit. The film would be released on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2006, Thanksgiving weekend, and would open against the Denzel Washington starring Deja Vu, the Danny DeVito Matthew Broderick Christmas non-classic Deck the Halls, and the Darren Aronofsky directed The Fountain, as well as going up against the continued success of Happy Feet, Casino Royale, and the surprise hit Borat. The duo recalls being on a plane flying to a gig somewhere on the day the film was released. In the air, they say they were having a little fun trying to guess the opening weekend of their film. Feeling a little cocky, they guessed it would open somewhere around $30 million. However, when they landed, they were confronted with the harsh reality. First, they saw that reviews were not strong on the film, with most saying that's a film made for fans of the band and everyone else will find it grating and the only way to enjoy the film would be through a haze of marijuana smoke, and that pot rarely helps comic timing. One of the better reviews came from Richard Roper, who simply said, quote, I didn't hate it. High praise indeed. Black and Gas were expecting poor reviews, figuring critics wouldn't be into their style of humor and were not deterred, really, by what they read. On a day like today, the balls get really moist and slidey. Some people think it's a bummer because, you know, like a droplet of sweat will slowly go down your ball and it'll be like a Chinese water torture where you're constantly like touching and adjusting and scratching and squishing your balls. I don't care about sweaty balls. However, when the first numbers started rolling in, that's when reality really took hold. They asked themselves, where are all the D fans? It was then, before Thanksgiving, that they realized all the hard work the years dreaming of a tenacious D movie amounted to a hill of beans, as Black would put it. He says it was extremely depressing and turned him off from ever writing another movie again, saying he lost his confidence. The film would ultimately finish its theatrical run with just $13.4 million worldwide. That's off a $20 million budget before marketing costs. Of course, things aren't always as bad as they seem. The film's soundtrack, which would also serve as the second Tenacious D album, would reach number 8 on the Billboard 200 and top the digital sales chart on iTunes, proving the film had developed a small but devoted audience. It became a top seller on home video with DVD sales of over $10 million. The film's failure did take a toll on the duo, with Black deciding to take a year break from all things entertainment, and Gas even floating the idea of ending the band. They would release the DVD The Complete Masterworks Part 2, which featured a documentary following them on the Pick of Destiny tour and their reaction to the film's poor reception. However, not long after, Black would announce the band had begun writing songs for a new album, and in 2012 the band would be back with a new album titled Rise of the Phoenix, with the first words of the album being, When the Pick of Destiny was released it was a bomb, and all the critics said that the D was done. 
The title track and coinciding rockumentary Tenacious D, To Be The Best, would follow Gas as he has a mental breakdown after the failure of the film and is locked away in an institution, while Black embraces the indulgences of Hollywood. Gas would escape the institution and attempt to kill Black before they both realize the importance of the band, going back to the studio and recording a new album that they describe as the greatest album recorded by anyone, ever. The album would have strong reviews and be nominated for Best Comedy Album at the 2013 Grammy Awards. In 2018, the band would release what they called a sequel to The Pick of Destiny, a six-episode animated series called Post Apocalypto, released on YouTube with the album released simultaneously. The film, conceived in the wake of the Donald Trump presidency and hand-drawn by Jack Black using markers and a notepad, would receive praise for its commentary on toxic masculinity and toxic feminism. The band has continued to be a force of sheer awesomeness, releasing charity albums, including a 2020 cover of the Rocky Horror Picture Show's Time Warp, a 2021 mashup of the Beatles' You Never Give Me Your Money and The End, and a 2022 free Audible original, The Road to Reduction, which tells the story of the band with newly released archival music. It has been nearly 30 years since Tenacious D formed, and they have been rocking our brains ever since. Sure, the movie may have been a misstep at the time, but it's gone on to be respected by the people that matter the most. Tenacious D fans both new and old. And who knows, with the rise of streamers, perhaps a new live-action D film will be in our future someday. With a new album slated for release in 2024, the D will once again rule this land as the self-proclaimed greatest band of all time. Let us know your thoughts. Leave a comment in the comments and thanks for watching.